Um, so, uh, uh, pleasure to speak with you all today, and I want to want to thank the Thunderhead folks for some flexibility. Uh, there were some uh, scheduling challenges uh, and so on, but uh, glad to be here and present this. Um, I, I will say that um, so I'm, I'm presenting this on behalf of a group from Fire and Risk Alliance. Um, and it's a, a little bit different, uh, I think, from at least the presentations I've heard today, in that um, the, the emphasis of this presentation is on inputs that are used in um, uh, calculations that we do in smoke control system design and such as would be used in, with the Ventus software. So I um, do want to want to thank the, the co-authors here, um, the, the, um, or the, the co-participants, co-conspirators, however we label the, these folks. And, uh, Babak and Stephen and, and Jeff uh, for their assistance in putting this together. So, um, the presentation here will we'll talk through, um, you know, provide a little bit of an introduction to the what is the the, the issue that's being talked about. Talk about some building survey data uh, that are, that can be used uh, to our benefit in in providing these smoke control calculations, influence of building characteristics, and then a summary. So. Um, the inputs for design analysis of fan capacity for stair pressurization includes a list, right? Uh, whether one's doing uh, hand calculations or using the CONTAM model or using the Ventus model, more the most contemporary of the, the list that I just went through. And it includes the magnitude of leakage associated with building components. So every building component leaks, that leakage needs to be accounted for, whether it's an exterior wall, an interior wall, a stairwell wall, a floor, a roof. Um, have to, to account for location of stairways, height of the building and stairwells, um, exterior interior temperatures, area space, exterior interior temperatures was a question earlier today about stack effects, so absolutely that has to be covered. Um, areas of spaces, uh, various spaces within the building, presence of other shafts, and, and, and on it goes. Um, so, um, one of the, the keys is in the, the magnitude of the, of the leakage, right? The, the uh, fan capacities we get for stair pressurization systems is, is pretty sensitive to the, the leakage characteristics of the, of the building as you, you might kind of intuitively expect. Um, and for any of you that have experience and do these, these kind of calculations, you've got first-hand experience of, of the difference it makes. The input for the leakage of the building components is provided as a leakage ratio. Right? That is, what's the, the effective area of the leak? If we account for all the leaks of that extra wall that, that we have over to the side with the windows and so on, and those windows are not airtight um, themselves, let alone the, uh, the, how they fit into the wall. The wall is likely not airtight either, um, although, you know, a decent boundary, but, but not airtight. Um, so the, uh, if you account for all those leaks on that wall, and we're going to divide that area um, by the total surface area of that component to get a ratio. How leaky is that wall? Becomes, becomes the question, right? Or any wall, for that matter. And the, the point is, is to talk about inputs, and um, the imp it, through a literature survey we, we conducted, um, and, and I think the benefit of this is that um, you know, we, we look in the fire literature, we look at our handbook of fire protection engineering, we look at papers in fire journals and so on. We may not look a whole lot at, at literature from other engineering disciplines, and that's what this is able to do and capture some data that was available in, in other engineering disciplines. So there's, there's this table in the, the handbook of smoke control engineering that um, John Clote was the lead author on. I've had the, the pleasure to be part of the, of the author team that, is, that has put together some books with John. And, and this, this uh, recent edition, there are five authors altogether of that, of, of which I'm, I'm one. Um, and for exterior walls, um, there, are, there are these leakage categories. So as you look at that wall, right, there are these leakage categories that are in the table uh, of tight, average, loose, and very loose. Well, what, what do you think? Uh, you know, is that loose? Is that very loose? I mean, there are no, there are no, there's no description of what's a loose wall, right? Um, and this data that's here in this handbook is from information from um, buildings in North America, largely from the 1970s. Uh, buildings changed in 50 years? Uh, I, I think so, right? Energy conservation wasn't even a phrase that was used in the 1970s. 
I mean, we had cars that got about, what, six miles a gallon or so on gasoline or, or whatever it was, maybe 10. Um, but uh, so energy conservation wasn't, wasn't something in our mindset in the, in the 70s. There were a lot of, a lot of other things, that, but uh, that's, that's, we'll, we'll talk about that over lunch maybe. Um, but so what's that wall? Right, um, and there's there's little characterization. So as a designer, having to use now Ventus to do a smoke a stairway pressurization system, what do you use here? And so you, you end up going and utilizing uh, what we politely call an engineering estimate that the rest of the world calls a guess, maybe wild guess, right? Um, and how do you how do you what do you base that engineering estimate on? Sometimes it's you know roll the dice. I don't want to be quite that, that cavalier about it, I guess, but it's a, it's a guess. As some of it is through trial and error. You know, you run it, you do a design, and well, that one worked. Uh, I, I estimated loose or average for a particular design. That, that seemed to work, so next project comes along, I'll use, use loose again. Right. Um, there, there's, there is some information from the International Energy Code, um, 2021 edition, that talks about the air permeability of air barriers, so exterior walls, uh, in commercial buildings, and they should be uh, less than 1.27, 10 to the minus four. So contemporary buildings where this code applies, they should be in that average range. They're a little less leaky than the average number that's in the table. <coughs> What do you do otherwise, though, right? What do you do otherwise? Um, there, there is some information. So uh, Tamara and Shaw and NRC Canada, 76, uh, did, did experiments in eight office buildings. Um, you can see high, the, the, the um, characteristics of these buildings. They were constructed in the 60s to early 70s, all included curtain walls. Uh, Shaw from NRC repeated this study in 93 had six buildings, five of which had, had renovations to the exterior boundary. Um, that, that ran in the renovated buildings, the, um, uh, the renovations in some cases did nothing to that leakage, and in other cases cut it by up to 43%. Right? Um, building that, that had not been renovated, the leakage increased um, by 23% in the 20 years since it was last tested. So buildings get, at least that building, got more leaky with age. Now, is that a general trend? I don't know. I, I know from my own house that uh, you know, every once in a while you have to go around or get somebody to go around and recalk the windows, right? Because the caulk dot dries out, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what happened here? I, I, I don't know um, offhand other than, all right, so there's this, this information. Well, there is information from, from NIST in a couple of researchers in Emmerich and Persily. I don't know if Kevin, or Persily, thank you. Um, so um, there is this information all done in, in, with an, the motivation of um, getting information for energy conservation though. Right? I mean, this is the driver. This is the driver for this recent information that, that we've had available um, it, that in their, their studies that they've done. I'll talk about a couple of them. So in 2011, they, they did one and found in, at least in 2011, that exterior leakage rates didn't change significantly from the 60s to the 90s in North American buildings. So kind of interesting. Uh, so there weren't, weren't a lot of changes there. Steve Stregge and Mike Farrar um, measured differential pressures in 15 high-rise buildings, four different cities, um, somewhat uh, northern climate cities or mid-range cities, so no southern cities, in other words. Um, during the winter months um, in 2013, uh, talked about the, um, you know, they, these were uh, fixed glass curtain walls or masonry with fixed windows, and that, I guess that's kind of sort of similar to what we have here. Um, and the leakage of the exterior walls were all in the loose category, is what, what they found. All right, all loose. <clears throat> so this is the, the most recent uh, survey. Now, uh, most recent, but, uh, though it is 10 years old, but most recent that we could find in the literature from uh, Emerson Persilli. I said that right? Twice, sorry. Uh, Emmerich, oh, twice, wow. Um, okay, anyway, so they, they had a total of 387, 387 buildings that they were able to survey, get information on, had several different uh, sources of information. They had the 2011 database, had a second database three years later. Um, 387 buildings altogether, and the mean leakage rate was 745, 10 to the minus four. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Oh, no, I was. There it goes. Uh, 
trying to come back to that beginning table. There we go, a long way around. So 7, 4, 5, 10 to the minus 4, where does that fit? Well, it gets into the uh, little looser than the, the loose value here, right? is what, what they found. Um, as you look at the maximum leakage rates, they're all more than very loose. I guess they're ultra very loose, right? Is, is where, where they are on the high end um, here. So, so what, again, as a, as a designer, what are you to do? Um, they, they, they do provide some information of trends, right? Of trends. And, and there was some data from Washington State that had a, a pretty dedicated um, energy conservation issue uh, where, with some improvements, though, as you look at that, that was one of the lines in the table. All of the max leakage rates are more than that very loose category. So they're again that that ultra loose kind of kind of thing. Um, so it, in in an energy conscious state, there there's some good news, but but it's not perfect. So again, as a designer, how do you pick the numbers? How do you pick the numbers? So as you, as you drill down into their survey, you can start looking at, so for a particular type of building, what's the, what's the trend, what's the kind of, uh, uh, what's the predominant, um, is there a trend in the data as to how leaky a particular building is? Uh, so here's air leakage versus number of stories. And, I, and I'd say there's a, a trend that's obvious here. I don't know if I can use this pointer. Yeah. So as you see in the low rise buildings, there's a, there's a lot of scatter, but there's some very leaky buildings. As we get up here to the taller buildings, meaning eight and more stories, though there aren't many data points, but, but they, there is this trend of, of uh, having um, less leaky buildings the taller they are. Now, I'm not sure that, that that's a, 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 a relationship you'd expect, but it's a trend that's coming about. So are there different construction practices for a high-rise building as, a pair, as compared to a three-story building? Are there different contractors maybe that have a different quality control aspect in a 10 or 20-story building than a three-story building? So something's going on to, to indicate that, that, that trend. Um, how about floor area for a big building, a building with a massive footprint? What are the leakage characteristics of that as compared to a, to a small building? Uh, and again, there's a trend that the bigger buildings have less scatter and generally have less leakage right, as compared to the, to the small building. So again, there's, if, if you have to make a guess as a designer, you're doing a really tall building and, it, and it's a, got a big footprint, um, then, then you, you're, you're not too bad off if you're going to assume somewhat of a tighter leakage rate than the short, small building. Um, exterior wall construction. I would have expected a lot more difference here than, than is here. Now, the, the masonry and the concrete panel um, are here, and they have fairly small leakage rates by comparison uh, as compared to these others. Um, but I, I, to be honest, I was surprised that there wasn't more variation for construction type of that exterior wall. Right? But, but there's a little bit. So if it's concrete panels, uh, masonry, um, th there, there are some, some trends there. Curtain walls, at least in the average number, uh, it is not bad. Frame uh, construction is, is problematic. How about climatic conditions? Do you get a tighter building in a cold climate as compared to a, to a warm climate? And energy conservation would be the driver here, I would think. And there's not the trend that I would expect. There's a little bit of a trend, though you, you, you have to stretch it a little bit. I would have expected a building in Minneapolis to be tighter than a building in Miami, for, for example, but that's not, not evident in, in their, their data. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure. I, and, I, though I, and I know and some of you, if you're from the southwestern part of the country and have had some experience myself in buildings in Phoenix, they tend to be very tight because of energy, energy conservation sort of issues, right? So in really hot, really cold uh, climates, maybe you get it, but, but we're not seeing it particularly on, on the graph here, although Phoenix is going to be a, a low heating day, right? <clears throat> and then what about your construction? Well, remember they, they're, they're one observation from 2011 between 1960 and 1990, there wasn't much difference. And yeah, right? That data is pretty well scattered no matter what the year. Um, there, there is this this drop off here. 
Now again, there aren't many data points, not many years to, to represent, to be represented there. Um, though in, in speaking to the local SFP chapter about this table yesterday, um, there was one individual said that, you know, there were energy conservation codes that kicked in in 2003. And that's right where you see the data go down. So is there an influence now with a contemporary building where, there's, where there are energy conservations and, and a code enforcement of an energy re requirement that maybe we can get to, to looking at, at reduced air leakage rates in exterior walls as a result? Right? So there is that little bit of glimmer, potentially. Uh, it would be really nice to see another 10 years of data there to see does that trend hold? Right? Um, so we, we do have some information. Now, I have to say, it's, it's limited information, right? This, all this driver of seeking this information is energy conservation. So there's not that driver for, well, let's find out what the leaky, how leaky a stairwell wall is. It's not an energy conservation issue. So people aren't looking at it. The, the funds aren't available to, to do that, uh, un, unfortunately. Okay? Unfortunately. So in, in summary, um, and, and I have it in, in the paper, some examples with, with uh, loose, and, and loo uh, loose and average and very loose buildings, what kind of impact there is on, on fan capacities. Uh, for any of you that do this um, and professionally, you're well aware of the sensitivity of, of the uh, fan capacities on uh, the leakage rate. So there were some, there were some calculations that, that uh, I, I was able to provide of a very simple building just to demonstrate it. Um, the previous studies have largely found out that the building envelope leakage rates are either loose or very loose. All right. There is information uh, from, from the, the NIST surveys, uh, Emmerich and Priscilli. Priscilli. I get one, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your perseverance or helping with that. Uh, anyway, there, uh, the, the leakage rates of, of extra walls, there are these, these trends that are, that are in their report. I encourage you to, to look at their report and, and the very nice graphs uh, that I've presented here, kind of the highlights, I, I think, of uh, building height, floor area, age of the building that, that can help you, g give you an informed estimate anyway, uh, as opposed to just some, you know, something you're, you're picking arbitrarily in terms of a leakage rate. So with that, I appreciate the, the opportunity to speak with you today and happy to entertain any questions and maybe even be able to answer a few. So. Thank you, Jim. Um, I think I'll start off with, do you know of any database or research or anything that looks at pass-through components and sort of characterizing the leakage of a sealed, you know, for you to perfectly seal the window around the perimeter and then just test leakage through that window assembly? It, is that provided by manufacturers or any kind of testing that we could look at to then come up with a cumulative estimate of like, well, you got seven right. of those windows and this right. is what you can add? Uh, I am not aware of, of a database of, of such things. Uh, um, I mean, they're, they're what, uh, equivalent, you know, R factors and such, at least for a home environment, I would imagine for a commercial environment too. But in terms of a leakage rate, I, I don't, don't, I'm not familiar with that data, if there is. And I'm happy to, if Simon, or I think you. Okay, let, one sec, let me bring it over. Um, there's a couple of architecture firms that are tracking the um, post-occupancy data for energy efficiency of their projects. That's tied to their 179D um, uh, energy tax credits. And so I think, um, I thought Sasaki was one, SQ Dumez Ripple's one, and part of what they're doing is um, looking at that overall energy efficiency which ties to the tightness of the buildings. The other thing which uh, a lot of the firms are doing is having their initial mock-ups primarily for waterproofing. And so they'll, during construction, they'll have their initial uh, window and uh, facade assemblies water tested uh, for that tightness as a component of that, which ties to your 2003 um, components. And what was interesting as well is in 1960, there was a jump up and it would be, I would be curious to see the pre-1960 uh, data, but in the 60s, you start to see that change in construction as well 
for facade use and the way in which we use concrete. Mm -hmm. um, and that really gave us a lot of leaky buildings. You think of um, John Portman and the way in which he was using concrete in the high rise buildings in uh, major metropolitan areas. So just kind of really interesting data. Anyone else? Hands? Kevin? Uh, when I run fire simulations, leakage rates are very important. But in a traditional like smoke control design, I mean, where does the leakage rate come into come into play? Like I know pressurization of stairwells, and you you, you have to consider that. But like when you know, like if we look at this space here, why would the leakage rate be important in like a smoke control design? And, it, and it's, it's a good, good question. So in a smoke control design, I mean, in a space like this, in, a, in some hotels, maybe um, uh, we, might, we might call this an atrium space. Yes. So we'd have exhaust fans on the okay. ceiling. All right. There's going to have to be makeup air coming from somewhere. Okay, so for makeup air. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. And uh, just to add on that, where, where it matters the most is when you've got natural exhaust and natural uh, makeup. Right. When you've got a forced exhaust, then you're going to be pulling a lot of makeup. You might pull some from the you know, pull some from the leakage, but you might get some from the doors or not. But whenever you got natural on both ends, that's where the, that pressure differential really matters a lot right. for the answer. Good question. Thank you. And just to piggyback on that, uh, would this research then affect the NFPA 92 um, guidance on like mechanical? Uh, <clears throat> makeup air where you're supposed to provide 85 to 95 percent is that going to you know, drive that number up or down? Um, I mean, it's a good point. Uh, there's um, it, it could very well be introduced into into 92. Uh, you know, minimally as an annex note to say there is this information, this data. Um, if not to bring it in and have it impact that um, you know percentage of makeup air that has to be provided for an atrium system. So, um, you know, good point. And that's, um, you know, I, I, I will take that, uh, we'll, we'll think about that, having a touch of involvement with 92 still and, and such. So, yeah, good point. Anyone else? No. Okay. okay, with that, uh, I should double check. Anybody online, do you see any questions? I can check my pocket. Nope, nothing okay. online. All right. Thank you so much, Jim. All Thanks right, for thank being you. Here.